Hi everyone and welcome back to Tennis Time. In this week's video I'm going to reveal the number 13 match on my list of the 20 greatest tennis matches of all time. But before I do that, now is your chance to subscribe to my channel in case you haven't done that already. Alright, so let's get down to business. Uh, the match I've picked for number 13 is between Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer. This is their 2011 semi-final clash at the French Open, which Federer has won in four sets. It may come a little bit of as a surprise to somebody who knows tennis really well, and you may have expected other matches which I've talked about before to be above this one. But for me, the quality of this tennis match uh, given the fact that it was played by two aggressive hardcore players who also do really well on clay, uh, both players played at an incredibly high level on that particular day. So I think that and what was at stake at that time made this match incredibly exciting, interesting and spectacular. So if we think uh, till end of 2010, Noah Djokovic playing Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal. There wasn't really any super big rivalry in the sense that Nadal and Federer were dominating everybody else, including, including Djokovic. Djokovic had his wins here and there, but it wasn't nothing so incredibly significant. But that all changed in 2011. Actually, one felt that Djokovic was etching closer already at the end of 2010. He reached the US Open Finals for the second time in his career and um, he's beaten Roger Federer actually in, in that semi-final of the US Open in five sets after Federer had two match points, although they were on Djokovic's serve, but Djokovic came back and won it in an epic five-setter 7-5 in the 5th, and uh, even more changes were visible when uh, Djokovic at the end of the 2010 season won the Davis Cup, and then starting from 2011, uh, from the very first tournament he's played until, up until the French Open, Djokovic has not lost one match, so he's played up until he met Federer in the semi-finals of the French Open, 41 matches straight. So he was really on his way of having his having one of the best seasons ever. And regardless of the outcome of this match and the French Open, that the 2011 season is considered by 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 most players and, and tennis knowers as one of the best seasons ever out there in tennis. Um, and yeah, he was on a 43 uh, match winning streak actually because he's won the Davis Cup as well the year before. So he, he won 43 straight matches. And um, he's beaten Federer, as I said, at the US Open semi final in 2010. And in early February at the Australian Open, he's beaten Federer again. Um, in straight sets at the Australian Open semi final. And uh, after that, he's played him in Dubai and Indian Wells in the semi-final and final respectively. And Djokovic has won uh, both matches. So Djokovic was on a three-match winning streak against Federer. Federer was still leading the overall 13-9. to But everybody was really expecting Djokovic... Okay, it was not like Djokovic was the overwhelming favourite, but... Most people would have said or would have given the edge to Djokovic since he was playing so well at the beginning of the season. He's beaten Rafa Nadal on clay twice in the row and the Madrid final, which nobody has ever done before. So he was obviously in a super red hot form. And um, both went on to a very good start in the first set. Both had their chances to pull away, but none of them managed to do it. Djokovic uh, um, was close to winning the first set, but he didn't. Federer was the one who took it in the end on a tie break. 
and he was going very strong, continuing very strong in the second, although it, it looked at the beginning of the second set that Djokovic might uh, come back and, and uh, get the set. He didn't, and Federer was playing really strongly. Um, sometimes you had the impression that he was using that clay a little bit like grass with that is uh, super backhand slices he could could hit against Djokovic and he was moving him so well around and he took the, the second set 6-3 six, six, and in the third Djokovic was, was, was really pushing uh, Federer to the limit and he was playing a little bit better he took the third set 6-3 and in the fourth it looked like uh, Djokovic was the one who was playing better he had a break advantage he was 5-4 up he was serving to take the to take the fourth set and take us into a deciding fifth that he did not manage to convert i actually remember the commentators were saying that given the fact that the semi final started relatively late on the day and they were playing already for over 3 hours it looked like okay if this is going to go into a fifth set it's already after nine o'clock. There's no chance they're going to be able to finish that match um, on, on, on that Friday. But Federer has broken back when at 5-4 Djokovic was serving for the fourth set. And he's forced a time break and he's managed to win the time break again. So given the fact how well Djokovic was playing at the time and how high the expectations were and... Uh, a possible a possible final of Djokovic against Nadal in the French Open and um, Nadal at the, at the time being a five-time French Open champion it really looked like um, this might be the, the clash of, of the decade <laughs> by that time and and Federer did not allow that to happen so I think this is a little bit of a testament to Federer's qualities as a player. Um, he was already very close to being 30 and uh, he's played an incredibly physical match and very strong match and he's beaten a Djokovic who probably should have won on that day. So in case you enjoy this video please give a thumbs up to it, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to post below the highlights to the match so feel free to check it out thanks for watching and see you next time